Hello, my name is Clea Hoja and today I will be talking about identification and characterization of small regulatory RNA in Streptococcus species. Most of us go throughout our lives oblivious to the mysteries guiding our internal processes. One big significant mystery is the bacterial flora living in our guts. These bacteria impact our day-to-day -day life by directly interacting with our immune system, our metabolism, and sometimes even our neurological activity. A significant proportion of our gut biome consists of lactic acid bacteria. The focus of the study was on three lactic acid bacteria, Streptococcus thermophilus, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, and Lactobacillus acidophilus. The metabolic functions of all bacteria are mediated by small regulatory RNAs. This is what fuels the purpose of this study, which is to identify and characterize the small regulatory RNAs that mediate bacterial metabolism and host interactions. Streptococcus thermophilus, along with other firmicutes like Lactobacillus acidophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaricus, are gut biome inhabitants that are essential for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Streptococcus pyogenes, on the other hand, even though closely related to S. thermophilus, is an opportunistic bacteria that can cause strep throat and flesh-eating disease. Since they are such close relatives, a lot of the small regulatory RNAs that mediate bacterial functions in Streptococcus pyogenes can be found and studied in S. thermophilus. So in addition to being one of our closest companions, Streptococcus thermophilus can also be used to study more dangerous bacteria, like S. pyogenes. The central dogma of molecular biology was first proposed by Francis Crick in 1958 and is an explanation of the flow of the genetic information within a biological system. It is stated that DNA will get transcribed into coding RNA or mRNA and mRNA will be translated and make proteins. However, not all RNA that gets transcribed codes for proteins. So what happens to the so-called non-coding RNA? Non-coding RNA will fold into complicated stem loop structures and mediate an organism's survival functions. Small regulatory RNA, or sRNA, is one of these non-coding RNAs that plays such vital roles in an organism's lifespan. But how do these small RNAs play out their functions? Small RNAs can activate and inhibit the expression of different proteins in a cell and they do so by using the same mechanism. They can bind to two different locations during the production of a protein. When they bind to nascent mRNA, as shown in green, they exhibit transcriptional regulation. When they bind to mature mRNA, as shown in purple, they regulate on the translational level. Transcriptional activation triggers the production of mature mRNA, which will then be translated into a protein and distributed throughout the body. Transcriptional inhibition, on the other hand, prevents the production of mature mRNA, so no proteins will be made. Translational activation, as shown in purple, triggers the binding of a ribosome to mature mRNA, thus leading to protein production. Translational inhibition, however, prevents the trans translation of mRNA to protein. This is going to prevent proteins from being made and the sRNA will have played out its function. Since Streptococcus pyogenes and Streptococcus thermophilus are closely related, their genomes were searched for a conserved sRNA that played the function in both species. MAR-S, which stands for MGA Activating Regulatory sRNA, was located and identified in the genome of Streptococcus pyogenes. MAR-S is identified in the uh, regulation of several different virulence factors. The genome of S. thermophilus was then checked for the presence of a sequence that was ortholog to MAR-S. A sequence with 80% similarity was identified in S. thermophilus and was called ASDS. Figure 1 shows MAR-S and ASDS sequences obtained from two different strains of S. pyogenes and two different strains of S. thermophilus. The red boxes are highlighting the different conserved areas between the two different sequences. Since Streptococcus pyogenes is a highly pathogenic bacteria, it was slightly surprising to see the conservation of an sRNA that regulates virulence factors in a Streptococcus species that has not a lot to do with virulence since it's non-pathogenic. 
that species is Streptococcus thermophilus. ASDS is now the sRNA of interest for us and is named after the gene located downstream from it, aspartate semialdehyde dehydrogenase. Its function in S. thermophilus is not very well characterized and its structure is not identified. In order to try and identify the function and structure of ASDS, several computational software were used. The NCBI BLAST tool was used to obtain the sequences of ASDS for different Streptococcus species. JawView was then used to align the obtained sequences and confirm conservation between them. RNA Fold was then used to perform secondary structure predictions. After obtaining the secondary structure predictions, InterRNA was used to check for RNA-RNA interactions within the genome and postulate for functions of the sRNA of interest. FAR FAR2, which is part of the ROSI server, was used to perform tertiary structure predictions. RFAM provided data for non-coding RNA, and CAKE provided data for genes and metabolic pathways. RNA alifold was used to postulate the consensus secondary structure, and the NCBI tools were used once again in order to predict primers and isolate the construct. RNA alifold was used to obtain a 2D consensus structure, which would demonstrate the conservation of the MARES and ASDS structures throughout different Streptococcus species. Figure 2 shows the predicted secondary structure of eight different Streptococcus species, including S. biogenes and S. thermophilus. The red brackets are used to highlight conserved motifs, and the areas with dashes are regions that are not highly conserved among the species. As seen in Figure 2, sRNA structures can be highly complex and have several stem loop constructs which can play roles in different functions. After confirming that several elements of MARS were highly conserved throughout Streptococcus species, the 2D structures of MARS and ASDS were obtained from RNA fold and analyzed. Figure 3a shows the 2D structure of MARS obtained from S. pyogenes, and Figure 3b shows the 2D structure of ASDS obtained from S. thermophilus. The conserved constructs were labeled P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and P6. As shown in each image, the sequences composing each stem loop are not necessarily identical. However, their structures are highly conserved. My part of the project was focused on structures P2, P3, P4, and P5. The P3 and the P4 structures, as shown here, are the ones that have the greatest variability structure-wise between the two sRNAs. Since structure and function are highly entangled, this observation could propose that these constructs play distinctive functions in each species. In order to postulate function for sRNA constructs, interRNA can be used. Graph A shows the areas within the MARS construct that interact with the most genes. As shown in the graph, the region with the highest activity for MARS is the P1 region, which happens to be before the 50th nucleotide, shown right here. Graph B, on the other hand, shows the areas within the ASDS construct that interact with the most genes. Based on, pos on nucleotide positions, the P3 and the P4 stem loops are the ones with the highest activity for ASDS. After locating the regions with the highest activity for each construct, the specific interactions with each gene were analyzed. From that analysis, the following postulates were made. In MARES, the more active P1 region is involved in general metabolism, detoxification, homeostasis maintenance, protein secretion, and even virulence. And the less active P3 to P4 region is involved in cell wool synthesis, virulence, amino acid metabolism, and RNA processing. In ASDS, on the other hand, the less active P1 region is involved in detoxification, general metabolism, and biofilm formation, while the more active P3 to P4 region is involved in amino acid metabolism, RNA processing, transport, homeostasis, and interspecies communication. Since Streptococcus thermophilus is not pathogenic, the constructs previously involved in virulence in MARS could have adapted to play other functions in ASDS. 
After analyzing the two-dimensional structure of ASTS, the three-dimensional structure was obtained using ROSI FARFAR2. The 3D structure shown in Figure 5a contains only regions P2, P3, P4, and P5. The 5' end has a blue backbone, and the 3' end has a red backbone. The graph on Figure 5b shows all of the structures postulated converging towards the lowest energy structure right here, which is the one shown in Figure 5a. According to ROSI documentation, the hallmark of a successful run is a graph that shows such convergence, indicating that our run was a successful one. To further analyze the 3D structure obtained from ROSI, I have dissected it into its individual components. I have also included images of the 2D structures for each individual stem loop. Keeping in mind that this is only the P2 to P5 construct, not the entire ASDS structure. We start with the P2 region, move on to the P3, P4, and then finally P5. The paired bases are shown on the same plane and are part of the stems of each component, while the unpaired bases, as shown right here, exist individually, occupying a unique plane. These unpaired bases correspond to the loops in each stem loop structure. The structures of loops and helical junctions are the areas of highest activity due to their exposed bases, like right here, acting as recognition sites in the structures. These recognition sites allow other biological entities to come in and bind to the sRNA, contributing thus to specific functions. After obtaining the 2D and the 3D structures computationally, the following procedures were conducted in order to isolate ASDS from Streptococcus thermophilus. Initially, primers were designed in order to isolate each of the components of ASDS as well as the overall structure. After successfully growing Streptococcus thermophilus and other lactic acid bacteria anaerobically at 37 degrees Celsius, their DNA was extracted and isolated. Using the previously designed primers, polymerase chain reactions and restriction digest were performed to isolate the target structures. Gel electrophoresis was then performed in order to confirm the isolation of each structure and RNA was made from each DNA isolate using T7 RNA polymerase. ASDS and its components were successfully isolated from Streptococcus thermophilus. Well 1 and well 2 show the size of the entire construct which is clearly greater than all of the other components isolated. Well 3 right here contains structures P1 all the way through P5. Well 4, uh, which contains the isolate that I was interested in, contains structures P2, P3, P4, and P5. And finally, the last four wells, also the smallest sizes, contain the P6 structure. So, finally, bringing everything together, we utilize computational methods to obtain consensus sequences, uh, predict two-dimensional structures of ASDS, which is found in Streptococcus thermophilus, and MARS in S. pyogenes, perform genetic mapping and postulate the function of ASDS based on RNA interactions, predict the three-dimensional structure of ASDS using the Rosetta server, and finally, design primers to isolate specific constructs. Um, not computationally, but more wet lab methods, we managed to successfully grow gram-positive bacteria on different media, isolate and purify DNA from S. thermophilus, isolate and amplify ASDS and its construct via PCR and electrophoresis, and finally, make RNA using T7 RNA polymerase. The conclusions that we have reached from this project are that ASDS is, in fact, highly conserved among all Streptococcus species. ASDS and its components were successfully isolated from S. thermophilus. Uh, computational data has suggested that ASDS is involved in metabolism, intraspecies communication, and transport, among other important functions. In the future, we would like to study bacteria and host interaction mechanisms through extracellular vesicles, which are part of almost every bacteria. We also want to conduct NMR spectroscopy to confirm the structure of ASDS. Uh, we also want to study ASDS absent mutant species to check on their phenotype and maybe postulate even further on the function of ASDS. And finally, since ASDS is involved in intraspecies communication, 
and EVs are as well, we want to see if there is a correlation between the two. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Here are a bunch of references.